uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at some panel data stuff and uh, some of the trickier uh, commands to, to master in Stata with panel data. And particularly what we're going to be doing is looking at reshape and also collapse. Uh, and so both of these have to do with sort of what the observation level is in your data. Now remember, the observation level is the level of specificity that you have for each row in your data. So let me take a look at the data here. So this is some data from the uh, National Longitudinal Survey of Youth 1997. Uh, and the way that the data is currently set up is that each person is one year, or one, uh, one, each, is one observation. Each, each observation is one person. So even though this is a data set where they've tracked somebody over many, many years and they've interviewed the same person over and over again, the actual data is structured so that each row is one person. And when there's something that's observed multiple times, uh, like let's say uh, your occupation, there's just multiple variables to indicate that, right? So here are all the occupation variables if for the, the year 1997 when they started out looking at these kids. And then they have another variable for 1998. And then if we keep going right, we're gonna have another one for 1999 and so on and so forth. So uh, keeping that in mind, we always wanna keep that in mind. It's very important that you always know exactly what your observation level is or you're going to you know, basically do bad analysis. You're not going to you're not going to be making results that mean what you think they mean. Uh, so reshape is a way of changing the shape of the data that's going to change our level of observation. Uh, and in particular, it's going to do what's taking us from what's called a wide format to a long format. Now, a wide format is exactly what we have here. We have a wide format, and what we mean by that is that uh, each observation. Uh, or sorry, each, each observation actually represents multiple observations, and we have multiple variables filling in for that, right? And so we basically have a wide data set because uh, it's very wide, right? We can see that we put in a bunch of extra variables, so the occupation variables are like 30 different occupation variables that correspond to, to the different years, taking up a lot of space on the horizontal axis, right? It takes up a lot of space uh, in, terms of the, in terms of width. This is compared to long format data, in which instead of going wide, you take these observations and you, uh, you, you basically have multiple observations per person. So instead of having one observation per person and a bunch of variables to represent the different years, you instead have one observation per person per year. So your data gets very long, right? You have a lot of different observations as opposed to say 8,000 8, observations that we have here across uh, 20 or 30 years, we would instead have uh, if we had 20 years of data, it would be 20 times 8,000 observations. So we're going to do that using reshape. We're going to go from this wide format to a long format. Uh, so the first step of using reshape and really doing any of this is to look at our data, which is exactly what we're doing here. And we can see how the data is structured. Right? We can see what the variable names are like. We can see uh, what, the, what the values of the data are. And whenever you're doing data manipulation, you always want to check your data re uh, very frequently. That edit command or that browse command is going to be your friend, because uh, all a lot of these commands are going to be based on you knowing what your data looks like, so that when you write the command, you know what it's going to do. That's very easy. If you think that your data looks one way and it actually looks another, it's very easy to end up making a mistake, and you might not even realize that you've made it until it's too late, and then you have to go back to the beginning and start all over. So what I'm actually going to be doing uh, to start out with, I'm going to be doing going from that long wide format to that long format. And the first step in using reshape is to type help reshape. Uh, this is going to be very helpful. Uh, I will open up this help file almost every time that I use reshape, even though I've been using it for, God, more than 10 years. Uh, so uh, this is going to give us the structure of the command that we're going to type. So we know that we have wide data, and we want to go from wide to long. We want to create some long data. Uh, and it gives you a nice little picture of what wide and long data look here looks like. And, we, this, and again, so this looks exactly like we have. We have this i variable. The i variable is the individual. Uh, you might remember this. You know, If you look at a subscript on a panel data equation, usually the i subscript would be for individual. So each individual is one observation. And then we have multiple observations of that same person. We create a new variable each time. And we have the stub which is the sort of the start of the variable name. And then we have a number indicating which observation it is. So stub one is the first time we observe that person, and stub two is the second time, and so on. Whereas with the long data, 
you can see that we have, again, still that eye observation, but we have, we have it multiple times. So the same person is observed twice, and so there are two observations with an I value of one. And we separate them out using a J value. Here's one and two, corresponding to stub one and stub two, and then this is just the stub variable. So we just need to take this structure and fill it into our reshape. So uh, what I'm going to actually focus on here is I'm going to use the I variable, which here is pub ID. That's the ID variable for each person in the data set. And I'm going to be using the uh, income variable. I'm going to, I have here uh, one uh, observation uh, per year for each person of the income that they earned that year. So let's take a look at those, va at those variables. And start, we all start with Y Inc. You can see it up here, Y Inc. 1700. I'm going to summarize all those. Just take a look at what we have, right? The 1997, 1998, 1999. So this is good to check because, of course, we want to make sure that we know what our data looks like before we try to do anything like this. So we want to take this wide format data and put it in a long format. Uh, so we need to know the exact structure of what that variable name looks like. And here it cuts it off. It's too long. So let's just look at one of those. So I'm going to use the describe function, uh, y inc, I'm sure 1700. And let's pick that 1997, yeah, one right there. So you can see the whole variable name. Right, uh, so that stub there is going to be y inc underscore seventeen hundred, and then the underscore. Right, the underscore is not going to it's not going to be able to handle that underscore by itself. And we have the number nineteen ninety seven right here, and so we want to basically create a new variable that's called a year, and then store these income uh, variables in uh, the co in the corresponding observations for that year for that person. So let's take a look at our uh, syntax here and see what we can do. So first, we want to we know that we want to do reshape long. We want to go from wide to long, like it says, and we want to pick out our stub. Our stub is y inc underscore seventeen hundred underscore. Uh, we have our i variable, which is our uh, individual identifier. That's pub id nineteen ninety seven. And then we have our J variable, which as it says here, J is going to be a new variable, right? Because that's going to be the variable that tells us what year we're looking at. So I'm going to create a year variable. I'm going to do that. It's going to take a second. You know, a lot of data to sort through. Come on. Uh, once it's done doing this, we're going to head, we're going to take a look at our data to make sure that's actually done what we want. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take an edit. I'm going to look at uh, just the variables we're interested in. So I'm going to do pub ID 1997 and year. And I'm also going to look at the y inc 1700 variable. So it will, have, it will have created this variable y inc out of the stub. Right? It will create, it will take that stub and it'll make it its own variable. And then the j variable, which we called year here. Uh, and so you can tell, right, we have one observation per year per person, so our, now our observation level is one observation per person per year. It's nice, we can do a lot of panel data type stuff with it, and we have our income in each of those years. So, we've got reshape, we can take this and we can turn it back into what we had, right? We have, we have uh, long data, maybe we want to turn it into wide for some reason. Uh, so let's just go back for it, why not? So we got reshape wide. Uh, so again, we have reshape wide, we have our stub, Y inc 1700. It's a variable that we want to turn into wide format. We have our same pub ID 1997 variable. Now this time our J variable is year as well, right? We take that variable that already exists and we're going to get rid of it and we're going to turn it back into what we had before. These commands do take a second and we end up with exactly what we started with. Uh, so that's how reshape works, uh, and it's not so much an issue of, I mean, you, you want to take this and you want to look at the uh, 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 syntax, and by the way, I didn't mention this, but there's also these nice little shortcuts. If you've already reshaped it, you can reshape it back the other way without having to type out all the stub stuff. You can just do uh, reshape long. Right? We just reshaped wide, and it will just know what to do. Uh, and now that we have our data in long format, let's look at another command that's that's very useful, collapse. So what collapse does is it's another it's another it's another command that will change our observation level. And what it does is it basically uh, takes some uh, 
it, it collects all the observations that we have. You start with long data. You always want to start with some form of long data uh, where you have multiple observations that you want to collapse into a single observation. So here we have one observation per person per year. And we want to collapse that into something else. We want to collapse that into something smaller where we have fewer observations. So let's say, for example, that we want to collapse back to one person or one observation per person. Uh, but unlike last time where we had wide format data, here we just want to look at basically, let's say we're calculating their lifetime income or maybe their average income uh, every year. So what I'm going to do here, first I'm going, to, I'm going to preserve so I can go back. What preserve does is it stores the current data set as we have it. If I type restore, it will bring me back to it. So I'm going to do some edits and then I'll be able to get back right where we are pretty easily. So the way that collapse works is that first you are going to uh, have a list of uh, ways that you're aggregating the data. So I'm going to take that income variable, right, so y inc 1700, and I'm going to collapse it in some way. I'm going to combine all the observations in some way. So let's say that I'm going to uh, generate a lifetime income variable. So I, I want to add up all of the income that you've ever had over the span of the sample. So for that, I'm going to be summing together right, all of the observations of y inc underscore 1700. And then you have the by portion of collapse, which tells you the target observation level. So right now I have one observation per person per year. If I want to just get your lifetime income, all I got to do is say, OK, well, I want to have one observation per person. So I'm going to say my uh, do that by pub ID 1997. So that will say, OK, by pub ID, I'm going to look at each person individually. I'm going to sum up their income variable, and I'm going to get a total income variable and that will be their lifetime income. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and run this. And oh, wait, no, I'm not going to run this, right? Because like I said, you always want to check your data before you do something like this. Always check your data. Now, you might remember from before that when we looked at our income variable, we have these numbers negative 4. What's negative 4? Was everybody really making negative 4 and negative $2 and negative 5? No, that is a missing code. That tells us that the data is actually missing for some reason. Uh, so if I just ran that collapse, it would average in all these negative twos and negative fours, which we don't want to do. Always look at your data before you mess with your data. So before we do this collapse, we're going to replace y inc 1700 underscore equal to missing if it's less than zero. Great. Then I can run my collapse command. Look, we have one observation per person. We have summed up their uh, income every year to get a lifetime income number. It looks like somebody didn't earn anything or all their observations were missing. And this is exactly what we were going for. Uh, let's restore, let's go back. Now, we didn't necessarily have to uh, use sum. We could have done a lot of things. And probably the most common one that I do is uh, mean. I could take the mean of Y income and that would give me the average earnings every year as opposed to the summed earnings over all the years. Uh, there's a lot of other ones. You could do median. Uh, you could do first, which is sometimes useful uh, for uh, if you have string values because you can't really take an average of those, but you want to collapse the data anyway. Lots of different things you could do. Again, as always, your best friend is uh, the help command. And if you look at the help for collapse, it will give you all the different functions that you can use. Uh, this has some other useful. Uh, uh, applications other than just manipulating your panel data. Uh, let's say, for example, we're not actually interested in individuals. Uh, maybe we are interested in uh, looking at the average racial wage gap over time. So what we have here is one observation per person per year, but what we want is one observation per race or ethnicity uh, per year. Uh, and that's going to help us figure out uh, collapsing uh, with two variables at once. So uh, what I want is I want to get, uh, first of all, I want to do this uh, replace again because I when I restored I got back all those missing values. Great. Uh, so next, what I want to do is I want to do collapse. I want to take a mean. I want to get the average earnings uh, of my ink seventeen hundred underscore by, and I want to do it by uh, race, which I I believe uh, s yes key race ethnicity uh, is my race variable. And I also want to do it by year. I have that year variable that I created. So when, like I said, this by function, what you want to put in is your target observation level. So I want one observation per race per year. So I do it like this. 
and what we have here, one observation per race or ethnicity per year. So in 1997, the average Hispanic earning in income here was seven, 786. And then as we, and that seems very low. Keep in mind, most of these were you know 16 or 17 or 18 at the time. But as we go on, right, we can see how their incomes changed uh, every year. And if we wanted, we could draw out a nice graph that would plot these changes against each other. All right, that is it. Uh, beyond that, I would recommend just trying it out for yourself. A lot of this stuff just becomes muscle memory after a while, uh, and you get used to it. Uh, and again, as I've stressed many times, the key is always to look at your data before you manipulate it. Otherwise, you're going to make errors. All right, that's it.